What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another example. This one's gonna be kind of complex, a little unique. So if f of x is the third root of five minus four times g of x, and g of four is equal to negative 11 over two, and g prime of four is equal to five, what's f prime of four going to be? So notice we got this function f of x here. They're asking for the value of the derivative of this function at an x value of four. But notice that this function here has another function within it, this g of x here. Now we don't know what the function g of x is, but we're given a bunch of information about it. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta find the derivative of this here. And instead of writing f of x, I'm gonna just write f, Actually, on this side, it doesn't matter. You could write f of x. But instead of writing that g of x, I'm actually just going to write the letter g. Just because personally, I feel like it helps me work a little bit better without having that g of x. It kind of just crowds everything. Now, the only thing you got to remember is that this g here is not a variable or it's not the independent variable. Remember, this is a function here. This is a function in terms of x. So just remember that this g here, that's another function. And so whenever we get to a point where we have to take the derivative of this, so like the derivative of g wouldn't just be one, okay? Because it's not a variable. If we had the derivative of x, that would be one but the derivative of g is not one, the derivative of the function g would be g prime, right? Because remember, this g is like g of x. So the derivative of g of x would be g prime of x. Same thing here with f. If we have f of x, the derivative of f of x is f prime x, right? Or if we just have f, the derivative of that, sorry, it shouldn't be an equals. The derivative of f is f prime. Okay, it's not one because that's not the independent variable that we are looking at. X is the independent variable we're looking at. So I thought I would make a note of that. And I'm gonna show you in the process how that comes about. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rewrite this function as five minus four G to the power of one over three, like that. And then to find the derivative, I'm gonna apply the chain rule. So I'm gonna take the derivative of the outside function, so bring that one over three down. The inside function stays the same, five minus four g to the power of negative two over three. When I subtract one from that exponent there, I'd end up with negative two over three. And then we have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside here. So if we have five minus four g, Notice that the derivative of five is zero. And what's the derivative of negative four g gonna be? It's not just gonna be negative four, it's gonna be negative four g prime, like that, right? Because the derivative of g, because it's a function, the derivative of g is just uh, g prime. And then that constant stays in front because it's sort of attached to that g. So this here, the derivative of this inside function would end up being negative four g prime. Now again, you don't have to get rid of this g of x. Uh, some people just keep it. Now if you did keep it, it would just, that would be g of x. That would be g of x. This here would be g of x. And then this here would be g prime of x. So if you feel more comfortable in keeping this uh, g of x, just because it allows you to see that that is a function, not the independent variable that we are looking at, then by all means keep it. But if you do just write g, just make sure that, that it, you remember that that's a function and that the derivative of g, whenever, uh, whenever you run into finding the derivative of it, it's always gonna be g prime, right? So this here, let me erase these actually. Sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place here. But uh, yeah, this was f of x, this was f of x still, I just took this, rewrote it in a different format, so this here was f prime of x, right? This here is the derivative of f of x. 
And so now we can plug in everything. Notice that they're asking for f prime of 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in uh, 4 for all the x's. So notice we'll have 5 minus 4 of g of 4. Right, so the value of the function g at an x value of 4. We'll still have that to the power of negative 2 over 3. And then over here, we'll have negative 4 times g prime of 4, like that. Right, so just for all the x values, I plugged in this 4. And now notice, we could plug in more stuff. Sorry, this would be f prime of 4. Notice now we could plug in more stuff because notice how we're given g of 4 in the question. It's negative 11 over 2. So we could plug in for this g over g of 4, that expression negative 11 over 2. And then for this g prime of 4, we could plug in this 5. So if we do that, we'll have 1 over 3. Over here, we'll have 5 minus 4 times negative 11 over 2. This will still be all to the power of negative 2 over 3. And over here, we'll have negative 4 times g prime of 4, which is 5, like that. And now we just got to simplify this. Notice now we're just dealing with numbers here. So f prime of 4, further simplifying. This is negative 20. I'm going to put it over the 3. So we'll have negative 20 over 3. And I combine this and that. And then this here, this bracket, uh, 5 minus 4 times negative 11 over 2. Now, notice negative 4 times negative 11 over 2, that would give us positive 22, right? Or you could say that 2 goes into this 4 twice, negative 2 times negative 11, positive 22. So this bracket would end up being 27 but it's still to the power of negative 2 over 3. And then let's pretend that uh, we're doing a test, we don't have a calculator, and they want the answer in simplified exact form, so no decimals. So this 27, negative 2 over 3, that would be like 1 over 27 to the power of positive 2 over 3. Right? Just bring that exponent down, change it to a positive exponent. And then 27 to the power of 2 over 3, if you had a calculator, you could plug it in. But if you didn't, what you could do is you could just split up that fraction like that. So you could say 27 to the power of 1 over 3, and then that's going to be squared. Or you could split it up the other way. You could say 27 squared, and then that to the power of 1 over 3. But then 27 squared is just going to be a big number. 27 to the power of 1 over 3 is like the third root of 27, which is just 3 and then that gets squared. So you end up with one over nine. All right, so 27 to the power of negative two over three is equal to one over nine. And so plugging that in, you'll have negative 20 over three, you'll have one over nine, and then you'll end up with negative 20 over 27. And then from there, there's no more simplifying that fraction. So negative 20, over 27 is the answer for f prime of 4.